All right, hello, everyone. Hi, good afternoon. This is Leah May. She wanted to join me on stage and say hello to you all. So you want to say hi? And um, I thought that we might share some microbiome. So do me a favor, give the person to your right a high five. Woo! And the person to your left, them high five. And then we just shared healthy microbiome, right? Very cool. Good job. Okay, go back to daddy. Thank you, Peanut. All right. So I got to play with one of Sheen's toys. So you guys all now have bottles of the new neurobiotic. And my presentation is on uh, how we use this in the office in, in a particular case study. So I, I hope you enjoy. And pertains to female mood. So the, one of the most common patients that we see are females, right? So we're seeing the mommies. We're seeing the, the women in the office. Is, is my sound OK? Is that better? That's way better. OK, thanks, guys. And, um, and so who typically makes the decisions in the family when it comes to health care? Or any decision, maybe. The moms, right? So the mom typically is making the food choices. The mom typically is getting the family to come to your office to seek your natural health care methods. And then, you know, begrudgingly, she drags in, in the daddy. And then he gets under your care, too. So this pre presentation is all on female mood because it's probably your most common patient base. Would you guys agree with that? You see more women than men? Yeah? OK, got it. All right, so here we go. Maybe we'll go. Oh, it helps if I turn it on. There we go. OK. The whole entire weekend, we've been, pers we've been looking at this health blueprint, and it's really a nice way to break down a patient case. Today, I'm focusing on the H part, which is the case studies and the conclusions. Okay. But thank you, Dr. Tips, for that questionnaire with so many different pages of wealth of information. I was like, oh, that's so cool. I didn't know that product had that herb in it. Did you guys learn new things about the herbs? Amazing. I wish I could download his brain, and then I'll download on a flash drive Shane's brain, and We'll be in business. That would save a lot of time, right? Okay, good. All right, well, what affects mood? So you have on your left the upset female. Uh, you guys have Kleenex boxes in your treatment rooms because, you know, you see this a lot. And you have the overstressed mama. You have the overburdened wife. You have the female patient that just has too many things going on all at the same time and has upset. Um, in 2009, this was me. So I thought by being a high school, college, and professional athlete that if I look good on the outside, then you must be healthy on the inside. And I think a lot of our patients think that, right? So if they go to the gym and they look like the cover of women's health or they look like a, a fitness model, then they must be healthy, right? And that's what I thought, too. Uh, I, played, uh, prof I played soccer and then I played a professional contact sport, and that's a whole other crazy story. But I thought, as long as I work out and I look good on the outside, then I must be healthy. But in 2009, unfortunately, I, I wasn't so healthy. I would be running on the soccer field, and I would start to get chest pains. It was hard to get anything done. Um, my mood, my poor husband, wasn't so good. I, he would leave his socks on the floor. Anybody else's husbands leave socks on the floor? Yeah. I don't know what it is. It's like it just, they just end up on the floor. And back then, when I wasn't as healthy, I'd be like, oh my goodness, you left your socks on the floor. But you guys don't do anything like that, right? And then, um, and then I would feel bad because I was like that crazy wife like, yelling at him because there were socks on the floor. The socks aren't hurting anything. And then I would start crying like the lady in the picture, and I felt all crazy. And then I'd have PMS, and he's like, are you, honey, you know, in the nicest way possible, are you maybe close to your period? Why? <laughs> Right? Or you watch like the Hallmark Channel and you've got like tissues and all that stuff. So in, in addition to acting a little uh, emotional, back then my hair was falling out. So I, I would take a shower and there would be like a weird hair monster in the drain. And um, I was starting to gain weight. So first it was 10 pounds, then it was 20 pounds, then it was 30 pounds, then it was 40 pounds. Um, and then 50 pounds on 5'4 just doesn't, it doesn't look so good. And I was exercising even more than I do then than I do now. No matter what I did, I couldn't get the weight off. And that was not fun. And of course, you know, if you don't feel 
good, then your emotional health isn't going to be, like if you don't look good, then you're not, you're not going to feel good. And if you're trying to do things to be healthy and you don't look healthy, then that's even more frustrating, like a lot of your female patients are going through. And then I started to have dizziness attacks. So uh, the fellow chiropractors in the room, I would go to do a chiropractic adjustment and I would get dizzy. And luckily my patients were laying face down. So I would just hold on to their back for a little bit. And they just thought it was some kind of weird back massage. And then the dizziness would go away, and then I would just continue adjusting them. And they're like, Dr. Palmer, thank you so much. That extra little massage that you did, it was so nice. And I was thinking, oh, my goodness, I'm so dizzy that I had to hold on to them just to survive. That getting worse and worse, and unfortunately, um, I became bedridden. So I was so dizzy that I couldn't get out of bed. One morning I woke up, I collapsed back into, into bed. And the whole entire room spun and spun like a ceiling fan. I'm pretty stubborn, so I tried to get in the shower, almost fainted in the shower, and then crawled back in bed with shampoo in my hair. I thought, oh, this must be some kind of weird flu virus or some kind of weird bacteria or something that got me, and I'll be done with it in, in 24 hours. The next day, it was like Groundhog Day. I woke up. I was dizzy. I was nauseous. I felt like I was dying. And I thought, okay, well, I'll just sleep it off. And then the next day was the same thing. And the next day it was the same thing. And days after feeling like you're dying, I begged my husband, and, and being, being in holistic medicine, I think you guys would all agree that no one really likes going to the ER or hospitals. Like the smell of a hospital is disgusting to me. And so I told my husband, I'm like, look, I, I think I'm in a really bad way. Please take me to the hospital. And he was like, oh, my goodness, you're asking to go to the hospital? And I'm like, yes, I think that I am dying. So he ended up taking me to an urgent care center, and what did they do there? <laughs> Pretty much. Yeah, antibiotics. So they did, a, they did a blood test on me. They did a urinalysis on me. I was in childbearing years, so they did a pregnancy test on me. And guess what they found? I wasn't pregnant, that's right. Who said nothing? Yeah, that's right. They found nothing, okay? My CBC, my blood panel was fine. My urine was fine. Any kind of physical test they'd done on me was fine and within normal limits or in a, in a good range. So my numbers on paper looked okay, but if you looked at me in real life, I had to hold someone to, to walk. I couldn't sit because if I sat upright, the whole room would just spin and spin and spin. So I thought, oh, my goodness, well, I'm just going to, like, what am I going to do? You know, you take an athlete who's used to being super active, and then you put them in bed for days and days. I didn't want to, I didn't want to continue on that way. And so the, the doctor, doing the best that he could, prescribed me a anti-dizziness medication. And I was super embarrassed. I went to the local grocery store in Florida. That's where we're from. And all grocery stores now have drug stores in them, right? They have pharmacies. And the pharmacy filled my prescription, and I'm standing at the counter, and I'm having problems standing at the counter because I'm so dizzy, but, like, I'm standing, but I, like, want to hide because, like, the holistic part of me is like, oh, my goodness, like, I have now kneeled down to the evil, and I'm filling a prescription, right? And, um, and I took it, and guess what happened? Nothing. Nothing happened. That's right. And the doc that pre prescribed me that, he said, well, don't worry. If you get worse, just come back and see me. Well, I wasn't seeing patients. I couldn't walk. I couldn't play sports. I couldn't take care of my dog. I couldn't be a good mother. I couldn't be a good wife. I couldn't do anything. And so I thought, well, what does worse look like? And as I pathetically crawled back into bed, um, I said a little prayer. I'm like, God, please. I'm like, if this is what my life is going to be, and I don't know why I picked this. Maybe it's a Florida thing because, you know, we have a lot of thunderstorms. I said, well, just shoot lightning down and just end it right? Isn't that drastic? Like, you know, could you imagine my poor family finding me burnt in bed? Like, what a horrible thing. But I just figured lightning, we, you know, Florida, we have a lot of lightning, it'd be fast. I said, <laughs> right? Horrible, right? But that's what a lot of your patients are going through. They don't know what else to do. So I'm like, please, God, just help me find an answer or just end it. And the message I got back is that you need to tell the, your patients the truth about health care. And it wasn't that I was lying to them as, as a chiropractor. It just was, I didn't think it was my responsibility to tell the obese patient that they need to change what they were eating or to tell the diabetic that had blood sugars out of control that it was time to buck up and get your blood sugars under control. 
or the mother that was feeding their kid Fritos in the waiting room, I didn't want to have those conversations. I just wanted to be their happy little chiropractor and let their medical doctors handle that. Well, what's the problem with that? They're not doing it, right? The medical profession's not doing it. The pediatricians aren't doing that. And some of us aren't doing that. So I said, okay, God, I'll, I'll do that. I, I got you. Um, good deal. I got this deal, and we found solutions, and one of those solutions is what I'm going to talk to you about today that we do a lot of in our office, which is nutritional response testing. Okay? All right. So what did we do? Shane has decide, um, defined the psychobiome, and so you guys have heard all that about that this weekend, so I won't go into that definition, but I just want to make sure you guys are super aware of that, and I think um, throughout this weekend you've been become super aware of it if you weren't already. So you guys all have the case in your office that um, keeps you up at night, right? It keeps you up at night. You think about that patient on the weekend. You wonder why they're not responding. You research things for them. You come here to Systemic Formulas, to, to the Sunshine Symposium, and to Psychobiome, and you're looking for answers for your patients, right? Maybe it's for your patients, maybe it's for yourself, maybe it's for your loved ones. But um, when Shane asked us to test this new product, I thought, awesome. I finally have something that I might be able to use with this case. So let me tell you about this case. Um, this is one of my most challenging cases. She's a female, 51 years old. I'm thankful for her service in the US military and the Air Force, okay? She was on tours in England, Turkey, Germany, Italy, Saudi Arabia, Iraq, Korea, and Japan. She fought in Iraqi freedom and, and in Saudi Arabia. And what do you guys know about military? What were they exposed to a lot of? Vaccines. She brought me my, her vaccination list of all the vaccines she received while she was in the Air Force. I about fell over. It was two pages of printouts of vaccines of all different vaccines she had. And then any time that the CDC comes up with a new vaccine, guess who gets it first? Our military. So if you haven't had any military patients or you do currently have patients that have served in any of the wars or have been active duty, um, you're gonna see vaccine-related damage. And what do you think vaccines do to the microbiome? It destroys it. So talk about a complicated case. Um, she has MTFHR, which we'll talk a little bit about. She has GSPD uh, deficiency. Um, for mood, she suffered with anxiety and had panic attacks and anxiety attacks where she didn't want to leave her house. So I guess you could also say she had PTSD. She suffered from depression where she didn't want to get dressed. She just wanted to hang out in her pajamas. And unfortunately, you guys know you have patients like that too. Energy levels were super low. Had problems sleeping, so this patient could just stay up all night. And she could do that for several days on end. Okay, so she'd come in, she'd be like, Dr. Palmer, I still haven't slept. Like, what do you mean you didn't sleep? Like, you couldn't fall asleep? Yeah, I couldn't fall asleep. I'm like, okay, well, then you fell asleep at some point, right? No, 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 I was just up the whole entire night. Can you imagine that? Do you guys have patients like that too? That's torture, okay? She suffered from headaches, and not just headaches, like headaches where like you have super sharp pain, um, dizziness, GI problems, so nausea, stomach pain, she vomited, she had IBS um, that liked to fluctuate between diarrhea and constipation, she suffers from kidney stones, so what's a great systemic formula product for that? KDIR, oh my goodness. Right, right armpit inflammation, so her lymphatic system on the right side, her right armpit would get super red and inflamed. And on top of all that, if that's not enough, hemorrhoids, okay? So this is a case where this lady served us is one of the reasons why we, we enjoy our freedom and she paid that price for us and now she's suffering, okay? And she's not alone. I've seen it, Air Force, Army, Marines, Navy, you name it. So those of you that are not familiar with the MTHFR, it's a gene that provides instructions for making an enzyme called, I'm going to say that wrong, so you read it, <laughs> methyl intrahydrofolate reductase. I think I did okay there. This enzyme plays a role in processing amino acids in the building blocks of proteins. 
Um, it's important for chemical reactions involving the form, forms of uh, vitamin folate. So the Moore's product with her is her friend. And in the nutrition response testing world, she will test for this product and do really well with it, and then she won't test for it. So she goes on and off this product. Okay? The G GSPD deficiency, so that's glucose 6-phosphate dehydrogenase deficiency, is a genetic disorder affecting red blood cells. And in individuals, there's a defect in the enzyme called glucose 6-phosphate dehydrogenase. You guys wish that you paid better attention in organic chemistry and biochem? Yeah. Whenever Dr. Morris speaks, I'm like, oh my goodness, I really could have used my biochem and I could have used more of my organic chemistry. And then those red blood cells are destroyed, and that's a that's called hemolysis. Okay. So she has problems, certain foods make this worse for her um, and can become anemic with it too. Her surgical history, so when in doubt, cut it out. Hey, Tyson, can I tape this to my face? Would that be helpful? I feel like it keeps coming off me here. Um, and so she had problems with her thyroid. So when you have patients that have problems with their thyroid, what does the profession, the medical profession do? They radiate it. They medicate it. And if that doesn't work, they cut it out. When in doubt, cut it out, okay? So her, she's missing her whole right side of her thyroid. She had a nodule that was two centimeters and another module that was really small on that right side. They were afraid, they didn't know what it was, and so they just cut it out. The example that I like to use with um, patients is, you know, and you guys know this, I'm preaching to the choir, is say that you go to your mechanic and the mechanic says you have a problem with your brakes, right? So they take your brakes out and then they say, okay, your car's fixed. You would think the mechanic is a horrible mechanic, but they do that to our patients all the time, and maybe they did that to some of you guys. Okay? So um, that's what they did to her. So luckily, she has the left side of her thyroid, and what's really interesting is working with her and having her take systemic formulas, she's actually regrowing her right thyroid gland. How cool is that? Okay? Now, the cool thing is she's getting a new thyroid gland because her body's making it, the not cool thing is that her endocrinologist, what do they want to do? They want to cut it back out because they are freaking out. They're like, oh my gosh, it must be a, like a huge nodule and we should cut it out again. But luckily, she's hung out with us enough times that she understands that the body has an innate ability to heal itself when given what? The right tools, the proper nutrition. And so she understands, yeah, no, my body's healing itself. The medical doctors cut it out. I'm getting a new, brand new thyroid gland. That's pretty cool. All right. Symptom survey. So Dr. Tips was talking about questionnaires. Questionnaires are cool. We like to use the, the symptom survey. It's 200 questions. Um, and it's scored mild, moderate, and severe. And it's by points. So mild is one point, moderate is two points, and severe is three points. And so when I first met her, her symptom survey score was 452 things wrong with her. Okay, we good? Cool. Is it in a good spot? Sounds good? You guys can hear me? Okay, good. Thank you. He even got like, he's so good that he even got like special like blend in tape. So I don't have this like big black bowl from black tape on my face. Thank you, Tyson. That was very sweet. So before when she first came in, 452 things wrong with her. Okay. And then after working with us for, it's down to 210. 210 is still a bad score. Okay. But this woman was falling apart. So questionnaires are really good because the patient fills it out themselves. And then at certain checkpoints, you can have them refill it out. So that's a, that's a useful tool. If you guys are using questionnaires, make sure you're letting the patients know their progress on the scores. You guys do that? Good. Okay. Um, when she came in, she was eating healthy, right? Don't all your patients say that they eat healthy, right? Oh, doc, you know, I eat healthy. And they proceed to tell me that all the unhealthy things that they do, okay? So she thought egg whites were super healthy. Anybody think the egg whites in the, like, the prepackaged container are healthy? 
Don't you wonder how they stay like that if they sit in that container on the shelf for so long? Like, oh, what's in there? Okay. Um, she thought it was super healthy to have Splenda. Okay, so artificial sweeteners, neurotoxins. She drank alcohol. She every night she finished her workouts by enjoying a bowl of ice cream. Okay. Uh, she ate grains, she mainly ate chicken and a little bit of fish. So you have patients that get caught up on eating one, one type of protein. Low fat, you guys remember in the 90s where low fat was the whole big thing. So she continued to eat low fat, uh, the low fat cookies, the low fat crackers. She was a personal trainer and exercised two hours a day, two hours a day. A lot of your patients are over-exercising, right? You guys seeing that? I was guilty of that. I figured if a little exercise was good, then a lot of exercise must be really good. And I was exercising so hard at the point when I was telling you my case that I was starting to get chest pains in my late 20s. I was running on the soccer field, and I would start to get blackness in my vision. What was happening? My cardiovascular system was shutting down, but I call it my dumb athlete brain, kept saying, well, you just push harder when that happens, right? My old soccer coaches would be like, come on, Palmer, let's go. And you just keep running. Doesn't that sound really stupid? But unfortunately, that's what a lot of your, your athletes do. If you're working with the athletic population, they get tired, you just push harder, okay? She was exhausted. She was depressed. Um, she had a bad marriage. She had ovarian pain. Um, she was on oral birth control for 20 years, 20 years, okay? Now, that sounds shocking, doesn't it? But a lot of your female patients are getting put on oral birth control when they're 12 years old, when they're 13 years old, when they're 15 years old. Why? Because they're suffering from PMS. What's PMS? Free menstrual syndrome. We think it's normal, right? Because a lot of women have PMS in the United States. I thought it was normal. I'm like, oh yeah, it's my normal bloating. It's my normal crying. It's my normal breast tenderness. It's my normal act like a crazy person for a day, right? That's what your patients think, right? That's what I thought before I got into this work. It's a syndrome. Syndromes are not normal. Down syndrome's not normal, right? It's a syndrome. It means there's imbalances. But uh, she got put on birth control for 20 years, and our, that's what's happening to our youth. And so you're getting patients that now are in their late 20s or they're in their 30s. They've been on birth control for 10, 15, 20, 25 years, and now they want to have babies. And their system's so imbalanced from synthetic hormones that it's going to be a huge challenge. So her whole entire female endocrine system was messed up from fake hormones for 20 years. That was just one of the challenges. She had chronic UTIs, and every single time she had a UTI, she got an antibiotic. So what's her microbiome look like? Trashed, right? How cool was that video that Shane showed us? That was a miracle. I mean, that was, it's miraculous what our bodies can do, given the right tools, given the right product. And so unfortunately with this patient, she would have a UTI, she would get antibiotics. She'd have a UTI, she'd get antibiotics. She'd have a UTI, she'd have an get antibiotic. She had so many UTIs that her medical doctor would have her call, and she'd be like, oh, yeah, I have UTI again, and he would just fill her prescription. Okay? So I asked her, how many rounds of antibiotics do you think that you've had? What do you think she said? At least one. UTI a month for 10 years. So how many antibiotics? Shane, any microbiome left at that point? <laughs> well, we'll talk about that. All right, and then of course, chronic cold sores. So her system's so off balance, it's just expressing all these symptoms like, oh my goodness, help me, okay? Patient's diet now, so doing nutrition response testing with her, giving her systemic formula products teaching her how to eat. Your patients do not know how to eat. Okay, so please, 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 if you're not educating them on that, please educate them on that. Now she does not consume wheat, no sugar, no grains, no cheese. Thank God, no more artificial sweeteners, no soda, no fruit, no fast food. So she's really done an amazing job over the past couple years that we've been working together, cleaning up her food and up her diet. Most patients, when you talk to them about food, what do they want to do? Do they do, want to do it fast or do they want to do it slow? 
Well, that's, that would be great, right? They know that they're screwing up. They know that nutrition is important. And so most patients try to improve their diet way too fast. Okay? And so if you just think of the microbiome, if you've been eating junk, you've been eating pizza and ice cream and cookies and all those things, and then you try to eat all organic vegetables and fruit and proteins, what's going to happen to them? How are they going to feel? All right, they're going to start to over-detox. They're going to be gassy. They might vomit, right? So it's just too fast. Make sure your patients are going little by little. Okay? So say that they're, on, they're hooked on Diet Coke, and they have a Diet Coke every single day, three times a day, right? because this is happening. So tw that's 21 Diet Cokes a week. How would you reduce that? 21 Diet Cokes to what? Yeah, maybe 20, maybe 19, get their agreement. And if you go little by little, it'll be easy for them. But if you just take the Diet Coke out, what's going to happen? They're going to have withdrawals. They're going to have headaches. They're going to get shaky. They're going to feel horrible. And then because they feel horrible, they're going to do what on your program? They're going to quit because they felt bad. Okay, So just keep in mind. Uh, another good questionnaire or quiz, there's a, a quiz that helps the patient identify how much sugar they're eating. There's questions on this quiz, and I can get this to you. Um, do you have sugar around the house? Do you hide sugar? Anybody used to hide sugar? I did, right? I was a sugar junkie. On this quiz, I was like the worst, okay? Cookies for breakfast, ice cream for breakfast. Ice cream has protein, right? Yeah. You don't think your patients are doing that? I totally did that. So anyways, if they have four more falses, it just gets them to see that possibly they're consuming a lot of sugar and possibly sugar may be a problem in their health. Okay? So this patient, when we did testing with her, so in nutrition response testing, we do muscle testing. Anybody do muscle testing? Awesome. So I don't like to guess. I like to test. Okay? And if you're familiar with uh, nutrition response testing, we have these test kits. Anybody have test kits? Cool. Okay. So if you don't have them, we have them out there. And in these test kits are the homeopathic preparations of these different substances. So this is how I was able to test her on the different food sensitivities that she has. Then we can find out what food sensitivities she has very quickly right away and start to work on them on a gradient. Okay. So according to the testing through nutrition response testing, we were able to determine she had problems with milk and cheese. She had problems with rye, brown rice, oats, spelt, wheat, whole grain sprouted mix, which is sprouted grains, millet, fruit sugar, brown sugar, white sugar. Uh, there's a, the test kits got updated in 2016. So if you have older test kits, then you don't have some of these newer vials. Um, there's a test kit, uh, test file for caffeine. So you can see if caffeine is negatively affecting them, which is helpful because our fellow Americans are caffeinated, right? Okay, so I love coffee, nothing against coffee. Coffee in moderation has minerals, but most Americans are doing what? Way too much. That's why we see Starbucks and Dunkin' Donuts and all these coffee shops everywhere. Okay? And then, un unfortunately, coffee gets sprayed with pesticides. right? And then no one's just drinking it black. It kills me to see the kids, especially in the airport when you guys travel. Do you guys see this too? So, like, you have, like, a 10-year-old or, like, an 8-year-old sitting next to you with this huge cup of coffee with whipped cream and caramel and all this stuff. I'm like, oh, my goodness. So, they're caffeinating, and they're, like, crazy with the sugar. Okay? So, bad combination. And then, unfortunately, the different flavorings are all chemicals. So, anyways, the caffeine vial will tell you if caffeine's a problem or if caffeine's affecting. And then caffeine-free is a way to tell if perhaps they might do well with herbs, so like herbal teas, and then eggs, okay? On the other side of the test kit, we test for immune challenges, and the immune challenges are, again, um, set up into four groups. Because I'm not a medical doctor, I cannot diagnose someone with a bacterial challenge, okay? So please be careful if you're not a medical doctor. Please don't do that. Don't use that in this way. It just identifies if there's the resonance or the energy existing in that patient. And the cool thing is, is that these bacteria vials got upgraded to include every single bacteria that existed on planet Earth today and or in the past. 
on any continent on Earth. Okay, so super cool. So it's really picking up a lot more bacterial immune challenges. Uh, the same thing for the viral group, the parasitic group, and the fungal group. Okay. Now the nice thing with how these test kits were created is the parasite vials, so it'll say parasite vial 1, 2, 3, and 4. Those correspond with systemic formulas VRM1, VRM2, VRM3, and VRM4. So you don't have to guess, you can test. All right, so Dr. Tips was talking about how parasites are these little mean creatures that wreak havoc on your patients, and unfortunately, they are missed all of the time. Okay? If you send your patient out for a stool sample, and that tech takes the stool, and they take a little scoop of it, and they stick it under the microscope, if that piece of poop did not have an egg in it or did not have the parasite in that piece, what's the tech going to say? Oh, well, you know, you don't have any parasites. Okay. My father is a research chemist, and he, we were working on his parasites using the systemic formulas of VRM products, but also doing coffee enemas and putting the liquid formulas in the coffee enemas. And yeah, you like that. That's cool, right? So then when he started doing that, and hopefully, I mean, we had lunch, and I know we're about to have a cool party and an awesome dinner on, on the mountain. And hopefully I don't ruin you guys. You guys are all holistic practitioners. This is talk, we could talk about poop and parasites, right? Yeah, okay, cool. So he's doing the coffee enema, and he's pooping out liver flukes. And he can see them. And some of these things, I don't know what they are. Maybe, Shane, you can identify them for me. But they have, like, little, like, antennas, like, like you know, the snails with the antennas? They look like a snail with antennas. Anybody know what that is? What was that? Helmets? Oh, okay, got it. Well, anyways, these crazy-looking parasites came out. So thank you for the tip on that. And, um, yeah, from using the CX liquid formulas. Okay. So with her, she tested along her case. She tested for all these different parasites and the corresponding with the vials, VRM1 tests for parasite vial 1. VRM2 tests for parasite vial 2. VRM3 tests for parasite vial 3. And VRM4 tests for parasite vial 4. And just remember, if they're testing for VRM1 or VRM2, those are parasites that do what? Lay eggs, yeah. So we want to make sure we cycle those products 10 days on and five days off. Along the way, she showed for fungus, uh, viruses, and bacteria. Okay, so these things can become cyclical. Along the way, we also had chemicals show up in her case. Okay, so the second test kit uh, has also been updated to reflect chemicals in our society that patients get exposures to. Why is that important to tell them? Because you can find a lot of information from the chemicals that are testing. So say, for example, someone keeps showing for acetates and acetones, where may that be coming from? Manicures, right? And does it drive you guys crazy when you see someone getting a manicure and then their kid's sitting next to them? The amount of chemical exposure is off the charts. I feel bad for the nail techs because a lot of them are going to have major health problems if they don't already. Okay? But we can check for asbestos is in here, chloroform, cosmetics, food hormones, formaldehyde, GMOs. There's a GMO vial. Uh, hazardous toxins, MSG, pesticides, radiation, recreational drugs, selenium, tobaccos, vinyl chlorides, all those different things. So you see her list is in there. And then um, REL, CLNZ, and BIND could be used for, for um, chemical detox. So she either tested for REL or she tested for CLNZ. And then you want BIND to bind those chemical toxicities. And Shane was explaining to me that you want to take that bind away from your other supplements because it binds so well, it can bind up your other supplements and or your patient's medications. So that's best taken away from your other supplements at nighttime. Okay, great, great product. She also tested along the way for heavy metals. So using the heavy metal test kit, I can get real-time answers from what's happening. So we had cadmium, which can be found in cigarette smoke, nickel, radium, strontium, polonium, zinc, plutonium, gold, titanium, 
And then those of you that have done nutrition response testing in the advanced levels, we actually have a test kit for vaccines. So I found multiple vaccine residues in her, including anthrax, DTaP, and I want to say yellow fever. Okay. Uh, she also had tin, mercury, lead, silver, copper, and ammonia. And we detox those using REL, CL, and Zine bind. Okay. Along the way, we use some really cool um, products that you guys are, are familiar with. So the GA, the GF, the Femicrin, the F+. So these are things that showed up along the way. Um, with the MTFHR, she's done really well with the Moors. She's also done really well with G-Cell. Um, we did the brain detox this past year, and she really had an improvement in memory and improvement in mood. Um, any kind of sciatica or weird type of nerve pain, um, end nerve really helps with that, along with N3 and B brain. And you guys can read the whole list. Um, 16B or B or, or B16, so depending on what you have on your shelf, so it's now called B16 is now called 16B. Love the product, really great for your patients that have energy problems, you love it too, yeah. And Elgut, Vivi, I mean, you can see the list goes on. So really complicated case. Uh, one of the ways that I've been able to find out what's going on with her in real time is I check her reflex areas. So in nutrition response testing, here is your chart of the different reflexes, and I'm gonna go through a little a bit of the reflexes with you. So if you haven't learned nutrition response testing, you can go home and take these reflexes with you and you can test your patients on these different areas. Does that help anyone? Is that good? Okay, good. All right, so what's she currently on? She's currently on the new product, so our new toy. Okay, so the neurobiotic product. So that's part of her current program. Um, she varies between ACP and ACX. Keep in mind if you're working with um, you know, the VRM products, if you're working with Vactrex or FungDX or, M or um, Vivi or Gold or any of those products, they're amazing products to go after the bad guys. But once you kill off the bad guys, you have dead bugs everywhere. So make sure that you're, the patients are getting enough drainage. Okay, So ACP or ACX really helps with that. Somehow I busted up my tape here. Um, Espleen, so chronic immune cases, Espleen, our lung, Bactrex. She is battling a current buggy with VRM2. Uh, her adrenals have had difficulty, so she's on GA and N nerve. Okay. With the adrenals, so in nutrition response testing, the adrenal reflex is located above the kidneys. Okay. So if you're muscle testing a patient and you find a locked muscle and you go ahead and you touch that reflex, if that reflex goes weak, then they're having an issue with their adrenals. If you're wondering if GA is going to help them with that, you can put GA on the body retest GA while you're touching the adrenal, and the body innately will tell you, yes, I like this product, and it is absolutely the exact right thing. And oh my goodness, I love GA. We couldn't exist down in Florida with it, without GA. And um, the, the, they'll do great with it, okay? Your patients are in the fight or flight response. We talked about that. They're stressed out, you know. Um, we were talking about at lunch how stress is physical, chemical, and emotional. We all know that. And these, these patients are coming in on sympathetic overload, right? So especially your moms, they're trying to handle the kids, they're trying to handle the family, they're running the soccer practice, they're running here, they're running there, they're just completely fried. And unfortunately, if the, the adrenals are affected, what else is are affected? Does it just affect the adrenals? You know, the whole endocrine system starts to crash and burn, right? So you can have hormonal issues, okay? Thyroid, so the thyroid reflex and nutrition response testing is located above the manubrium, okay, on the lower part of the neck, so right there. So that's thyroid. If you want to test someone's thyroid and you want to know in, in real time if perhaps their thyroid is not functioning 100%, you test that point. If that goes weak, their body's saying, yeah, the thyroid's not 100%. You can try GF with them. You put GF on the body. You test thyroid. If it locks, their body's like, yeah, I could use some GF. Um, keep in mind that, that thyroids are negatively affected with chlorine. Okay. So if you remember or chemistry, if you remember chlorine and iodine are the same row in the periodic chart, am I bringing back bad memories from some people? <laughs> okay. But there's a lot more chlorine than there is iodine. 
Okay, so we get a lot of chlorine exposure and toxicity. Where is this chlorine coming from? Our water supply. Did you know that your city water can just, the, the, your, your guys, the city plant can just decide to do what's called a burn? Have you guys heard of that? So they have a certain amount of chemicals they can put in the water supply. And at certain points, they can do what's called a burn, where they jack up the amount of chemicals and they, they cause the burn, meaning they increase the chlorine levels and they increase the other chemical levels. Okay? Our city water is so bad that they can't get the pharmaceutical drugs out of it. They can't get the toilet paper out of it. Okay, So city water has, no one's going to want to drink anything tonight. <laughs> There's the, the, the parts per million of toilet paper they just can't filter out, okay? So please, 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 if, you're, if your patients are drinking city water, at least get them to use a filter. Where else would they be getting the chlorine from if they're not drinking city water? Showers, that's right. And then most people take hot showers. What happens to pores with hot showers? They open up, and all that chlorine gets dumped in. So that's just one of the things that's irritating with thyroid. The other problem is these guys right here. Okay, EMFs. And where do we put this lovely thing? Right by our head. And where do your female patients put this? In their bra over their heart. Right? Okay. So if you haven't talked to your patients about cell phones, please do. When I see a mama and they have a baby that's like chewing on a cell phone. Does anybody else want to rip the cell phone out of the baby's hand and like throw it across the room? <laughs> I do. Does that sound, does that sound psycho? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah, I know. It's right here. I'll take one. <laughs> okay. So radiation, uh, please make your patients aware of the, the negative effects of cell phone. If they don't believe you, have them refer to their cell phone manuals. Because in their manual, it says may or may not uh, cause brain tumors. Okay, so radiation right by your face is not good. The further away you keep your phone, the better. Um, sugar, of course, messes up the thyroid, stress. Soy, why soy? That's right. So it's plant-based ba plant estrogens. And then it's also most soy in the U.S. is GMO. Okay. Um, Hormonal issues, mood, energy, and fatigue. Okay, so if you're not using GF, oh my goodness, it's a game changer for your female patients. Pituitary, so the reflex and nutrition response testing, everybody find your left ear, go about an inch up and an inch back. That's the pituitary reflex. Okay, you don't have to be that specific. When we're talking about reflexes, we're talking about dermatomes. And remember, a dermatome is a patch of skin that the nerve controls. So we're going after kind of like a reflex area. So you're testing the patient, you find a locked muscle, and then you go ahead and you touch that reflex. If that reflex is weak, they may have problems with their pituitary gland, and you can test them on GB. Okay, the pineal re reflex, I busted my tape, Tyson. The pineal reflex is if you find the bridge of your nose and you go up, that's where the pineal reflex is, is located. Why is pineals important? Melatonin, yeah, so your patients that can't sleep, okay, well, some people refer to that as your spiritual center, okay. What calcifies the pineal gland? Fluoride, and where do we find fluoride? In our water supply. Those of you that were here at um, Sunshine last year, we got to meet Dr. Jerry, he's amazing, and he has the Revitin toothpaste that helps with the, the flora in the, in the mouth. And then also it's fluoride free. So if you're not selling that at your office, I highly suggest that you guys do that. Keep in mind also head injuries can affect the pituitary gland and the pineal gland. Your cranial bones can shift. Has anybody ever like bent over the cabinet and then banged their head on the cabinet? Okay, so that can shift your cranial bones and affect your pineal and your pituitary. Um, myself as a soccer player, so heading the ball. In soccer we do this crazy thing where you hit a soccer ball with your forehead. Okay, so super fun sport. I love it. Any fellow soccer players? Or am I the only crazy one? Yay, you and me! <laughs> yeah, so heading the ball with your forehead can mess up your cranial bones, which can affect your pituitary gland. If you have little ones or you have nieces or nephews or little people or bigger people that are playing soccer, 
um, chiropractors in the room, please make sure you're adjusting them. If you do cranial work, please make sure you're doing cranial work and test their pituitary gland. Um, heavy metals, of course, affect the pituitary. It will cause hormonal imbalances or PMS, menopause symptoms, and then your patients that can't sleep. A great combination product with GB would be what for sleep? Dream. D-R-E-M, dream. I love dream. But please, please, please make sure if you're going to give patients dream that you tell them to take it at night before bed, <laughs> which sounds pretty obvious, right? But um, some patients will take it, and then they'll try to do like 20 million things, and then they kind of lost their window. So they want to take it before bed and then go to sleep. Right? Frontal brain, so if you find your hairline, the frontal brain reflex is right there. Okay? It's a really good reflex for patients with stress. Okay? So you have the mom that's doing a million things. You have the dad with the ta tax deadlines. You have the kid in school the college kid with finals, whatever the case may be, you can check the frontal brain. It correlates to mental stress and emotional stress. If you have the female that's freaking out and she's crying or she's talking a million miles a minute, like, <laughs> you guys ever have female patients like that? Um, you can check them on Bee Brain or any of the brain products. Um, also, foggy brain. There's a lot of patients that just can't think. Okay? They're so nutrient deficient that there's just nothing to, to operate on. So B brain, head injuries and sports injuries, okay, brain brain related. All right, so you guys want to hear the clinical pearls on the new product? Does that interest you guys? Okay. So with this case and some of my other cases that we got to play with the product on on the new um, neurobiome, neurobiotic, excuse me, neurobiotic, is um, they found relief of fatigue after eating meals. Okay, so if you eat and then you get sleepy, it means your digestion is poor. It means you're not digesting properly. It also means you could have just ate poor food, right? You just had a huge bowl of pasta or you ate too much bread or whatever the case may be, okay? So fixing the biome, fixing her microbiome or starting to handle that, she could eat and then not feel so, so sleepy, which is great. She had sharp stabbing headaches. Like some, it felt like someone was stabbing her in the head. After just adding this, that sharp stabbing headache pain went away. Okay, so I would say that it was starting to affect her brain biome, her neurobiome. Okay. Um, she overall felt better. So remember, she had anxiety and depression. Her mood was better. And I was like, wow, I started. You guys ever feel like, you, you know, this, this kind of zombie comes in? And then you start working the case, and then you're like, wow, there they are. There's that person. She had an overall sense of well-being. Um, she said, so now it's in capsules, um, but Shane and I were, were talking, if you have patients that tend to be more sensitive cases, you may open the capsule because it can be a little, it could be a little intense on their, tra on their GI tract. So a little clinical pearl is if, because these, these are in capsules now for the neurobiotic, but if, if you have a real sensitive case, you might open up that capsule and mix it in water. So when we were testing the product, it came loose. It, it came not in capsules. So if you mix it with water, it tastes a little bit like tuna fish water. But she didn't really mind it. She liked it. You know, ever find it like you need something, and you take that supplement, and, and it tastes amazing to you, and then your body doesn't need it anymore, and you're like, oh, that's gross. Or the smell of it's like, ugh. Like Moors, if I need Moors, it smells amazing to me. If I don't need Moors, I'm like, oh, get it away. <laughs> no more Moors. <laughs> Okay. Or she said it tasted a little bit like watered-down milk. And then she mixed it, teaspoons of product in water, and she took it with meals. Okay. So how we use this is um, we did the usual with nutrition response testing with our cases. And then you ever have, like, something that you're trying to handle and it's just not getting handled? It became a case cracker for us. So that case that was stuck... I'm like, hey, I have a new toy. And I would take out the new toy, and I would test it. And if it tested well, we would go through the rest of the steps. So in nutrition response testing, we test digestive points. So if you go down the sternum and you go to the right, that's a digestive point. And you go to the left, that's another digestive point. We would test the vagus nerve behind the left ear, and that tells us if they're sensitive to the product. We would make sure that the nervous system was in a state of healing, and we would make sure that the exact right product didn't have an opposite effect. 
So if you ever had a patient that, say, they took Dream, right, or they took, like, a calming product, and they said, oh, it made me anxious, it just meant that the patient was in a condition of what we call opposite land or switching. So you can handle that. You can fix that. So one, you want to make sure they're in a healing state. And two, you want to make sure the exact right thing doesn't cause the opposite effect. So with her um, and with these cases, we would, you know, I took out my sample bottle of the neurobiotic and I would test them. And if they tested well, it was that like next thing to get them over that hurdle. So any of the, your stalled out cases, um, they have that buy 10, get 40% off. That's a nice deal, right? So go ahead and get some bottles, and that way you guys can use them for any case that you know that you're jotting down notes. You're like, oh, Henry, or oh, you know, whatever the patient's name is, you're thinking about, oh, man, that case is stalled out. This may get that case moving again. Okay, so that's how we found. We found, like, oh, my goodness, these really difficult cases are the stalled out case. This was the missing piece. Cases that are going the wrong way, this might be the missing piece. Your difficult patients, the ones that are keeping you up at night, the ones that you're worried about, this helped us out a lot. Um, a couple female patients that were really anxious, this helped them with anxiety. Okay, so we did the usual. We were handling their adrenals. We were handling their food. We were handling all the things that we normally work on, and they were just still anxious. When we added this in, their anxiety levels went down. So that's pretty cool. Um, immune challenges. Okay, so if, if this is going to fix your biome, if this is going to improve your biome, it's also going to help you handle immune challenges. So it's going to help bacteria and viruses and parasites and all that stuff. Um, so stuck cases on that where the parasites were, weren't going away, it helped us crack that case. It helped that case move along. Your tired patients and your patients that are just depressed or sad or just not, not in a good place. Another thing that I want to mention is another product that we talked about last year is uh, the skin colonizer. Anybody using skin colonizer? Oh, awesome. Okay. My patients love skin colonizer. I love skin colonizer. It's usually in my purse. Um, and one of the reasons why is um, I'll talk a little bit about scars. So anybody familiar with scars? Like what scars do to the body? Okay. So those of you that aren't, aren't familiar with that, a scar on the surface of the skin irritates the nervous system. Okay. Why does it irritate the nervous system? Because the nervous system sends signals to it, and it can send signals to the nervous system. Okay. Then that scar can start to act as a capacitor and store signals and misfire and irritate the nervous system. Okay. What can be a scar? It could be anything. It could be your belly button. Why would your belly button be a scar? That's right, that's where you got disconnected from mama. So you had your umbilical cord, and then your umbilical cord got cut, and then you had that little weird stumpy thing, and then the stumpy thing fell off, okay? So um, unless you had a lotus birth, right? Anybody familiar with lotus births? So a lotus birth is where they keep the umbilical cord on, and then they just let it naturally fall off. Yeah, pretty cool, huh? I know. With the placenta, yeah, you carry the placenta and the baby and all that. <laughs> it sounds like a good idea. I didn't do it, but it sounds like a good idea. So your belly button can be a scar. Um, obviously, surgical scars, falls, scrapes, uh, ear piercings, tattoos, circumcisions, vasectomies, episiotomies, any disturbance on the skin's surface. Acne scars, chickenpox scars. And then the teeth are a similar tissue, so if you had teeth pulled out, that can be considered a scar, okay? And because a scar negatively affects the nervous system, and the nervous system controls what? Everything. A scar can cause anything. Anything, okay? So my father had a mole removed on his back, and um, he we've been handling his... He, he likes to have high blood pressure. So he's, a, he's an Italian man. He gets a little angry sometimes. His blood pressure raises, and then it has a little bit of difficulty coming back down. One day, um, he wasn't feeling so hot because his blood pressure was high, and I was testing him with nutritional response testing, and I found out that his system was in a state of non-healing. And I went through, and I used the test kits, and I was looking for, you know, possibly could it be from a food, 
Could it be an immune challenge like a bacteria or a virus or a parasite? Could it be a chemical toxicity that he ran into? Could it be a metal toxicity that it, he got exposed to? And then the last thing we check is, is scars. And so I tested him for scars, and um, we do that utilizing what fixes scars, which is organic vitamin E. So with systemic formulas, you can use skin colonizer, or you can use renovator. So I tested him, and it, he tested for scars. And it turned out that the mole removal on his back that he just had done from the dermatologist irritated his nervous system and irritated his nervous system so much that it was raising his blood pressure. What's the treatment for scars? So we went through, these are all the scars, by the way. Uh, tattoos, I forgot to say tattoos. Stretch marks, oh, I did say that, thank you, yeah. So tattoos is a combination um, problem. And if you have tattoos, I think they're cool. I'm a wimp, I don't like needles, sorry. But I think they're very artistic and expressive. Um, but the problem with tattoos is it's scars because it's um, handling, it's, it's uh, changing the integrity of the skin. And then it's injecting you with what? I'm sorry, I'm sorry, chemicals and metals. Um, I was teaching and I had a nurse that worked with the lymphatic system. And she goes, well, I can tell you that tattoos leak. I'm like, well, what do you mean tattoos leak? Like, that sounds kind of weird. Because you, you kind of see, like, older tattoos, what happens to them? They fade. So she goes, well, they absolutely leak, which is kind of like a weird viewpoint on it. And I said, well, what do you mean by that? She goes, well, you know, say if someone had a tattoo right here on their shoulder, the body will pull the chemicals and metals out of the tattoo and put it in a lymphatic system. So say that you had, like, a, I don't know, like a purple tattoo on your arm, the lymph nodes in your armpit have now been stained purple. Wild, right? Yeah, so some of you guys are mad at me now. I'm sorry. But uh, any disturbance, <laughs> tattoos or any disturbance on the skin surface. So how do you handle that is you're going to take your skin colonizer. So you can, which formula should you use? Again, you can muscle test it. Okay, so you put skin colonizer on the body. You test it. If they lock, then use skin colonizer. If they don't like it, their arm will unlock. Then use Renovate. Okay. And then you're going to rub the renovator or the skin colonizer into the scar. If you tell patients to do that one time a day, they'll probably do it, maybe, kind of, right? I love when you ask a patient, so, Mrs. Jones, did you do your scars? Um, yeah, yeah. What does that mean? No, it means they didn't do it. Adults lie. You know your patients lie, right? Yeah, they totally lie. So I tell patients to do it two times. Why? And so that's right. So they at least do it once. Okay. So you get that vitamin E right on that scar, and then the body can heal from the negative effects of the scar. Okay. And it's not so much a cosmetic thing. It's so it no longer stores those signals and push those negative signals out. Okay. We don't want it acting as a capacitor anymore. We want the body to handle it. So the age of the scar doesn't matter when you're talking to patients about scars. Um, it doesn't matter if it was from the time they were a little tiny baby or if it was recently. And you rub the renovator or the skin colonizer on the scar twice daily. Again, if you just tell them once, they'll probably forget. If you tell them twice, then they might remember once. For a period of 30, 60, 90 days. And the oil heals the scar and keeps it from actively throwing off those bad signals to the nervous system. Now, if you handle that with a cold laser, so some of you guys have really big lasers, like Ar Arconia's, which are super awesome. Uh, you can use this little laser. This laser is actually out of Hawaii. And the nice thing is it's portable. So the nerd practitioner in me keeps them in my purse, OK? Um, the, the nerd mommy in me keeps this in my purse, because it's, it's really cool. I was on a long plane flight once, and I thought, hey, this is like the perfect time for me to laser my scars. And then like a little red light kind of like shone on the airplane wall. And I'm like, oh, no, this is a bad place to laser my scars. <laughs> I thought it would like freak out the plane. Do you guys ever do stuff like that as practitioners? Like, you, you know, like you start taking your supplements in public, stuff that's normal to us. And that's why I love you guys. And I love being here at Systemic Formulas because I can tell you about all this stuff. And you're like my people, you know, like we're not weirdos. Like we're like normal, right? But if you do it like at the airport, people are like, what are they doing? Why is she giving her kid that? What is that, right? Do you guys run into that too? Okay, good, just checking. All right. So anyways, you put the oil on, so whether it's the skin colonizer or the renovator, 
And then you can follow that up with a cold laser treatment. So five minutes per inch of scar. Now, what if someone has a crazy amount of tattoos? So it's like tattoo on the neck and tattoo down the arm and tattoo down the side and tattoo down the leg and all that stuff. Super artistic and really aesthetic looking, but it could be a problem. So you would have to test to see what scar is active. So you can actually test the different scars. So you can stick your finger in their belly button. You can test these different active scars. If it's a, if it's a tattoo, you would test a portion of the tattoo and continue on. So it depends on what you're testing. But say if you're just seeing if it's an active scar, you would find a lock muscle. Okay? Then you would test the scar. If that scar is an active scar, your muscle response will change. The muscle will go weak. And then you'll know that they need to treat those scars. When in doubt, just let them handle it. Right? It's organic vitamin E. It's not going to hurt them. And Skin Colonizer has like eight oil shame. I think there's like eight different oil. If you've ever read it, it's like eight different super awesome healing oils. But in addition to that, it has the, the probiotics for the skin. How amazing is that? And you guys realize that there's no other formula like that in the whole entire planet. And we have it. Thank you. All right. So here's my little peanut. Some of you guys have seen her um, around this weekend. And um, I want to share a personal story with you. Um, the continuation of the beginning of the story was um, due to the work of the people that came before us. So Doc Wheelwright and all the different healers and, and my chiropractors throughout my life did applied kinesiology. Um, the founder of nutrition response testing, Dr. Yunlin, through nutrition response testing, I was finally be able to find the cause of my problem. Okay? Because the blood work that we had done came back that I was fine. But I knew that something wasn't right with me, you know? And un unfortunately, a lot of your patients think they're a bit crazy because a lot of their testing has come back with no problems. And they've been told by their medical doctors that they're fine. And it's all in their head. And they're just stressed or they're just anxious or they're just depressed. And the problem with that is if they don't know you exist, if they don't know you're in their town or in their city, what's going to happen to them? They're going to get prescribed an antidepressant. And what's the problem with the antidepressant? What's the side effect of antidepressants? Depression, aggression, and suicide. Okay? And then now we know it messes up the microbiome. Okay? So even additional problems. It just gets worse and worse and worse. So with me, um, thank God I found nutrition response testing and through this weird muscle testing thing, right? So it's, it's interesting to us but weird to the, the rest of the population. I was tested against myself. And are you guys interested in what was found? Yeah? So um, my pr priority area, because in nutrition response testing, we can find what areas are working well and what areas are not working well because we're comparing ourselves. We're, we're getting compared to ourselves instead of the general population. So when I was compared to myself through the nutrition response testing, my number one area, any guesses? I'm sorry? Gut, that would be a great, I'm sure that was part of the equation, yeah. So we do test the gut. Adrenals would be an amazing guess, yes. I'm a soccer player. What's this point? Pituitary. So my number one area was my pituitary gland. So my little master gland was all messed up. So the practitioner that tested me didn't just say, hey, your master, little master gland's all messed up. Good luck with that. Right? <laughs> Which is a lot of the answers sometimes we get is, oh, well, I found the cause of your problem. You have this. And good luck with that. Right? It was through the test kits found out that I had a heavy metal toxicity. So I know Dr. Pompa went through a uh, similar difficulty. And the heavy metal toxicity through the test kits I was able to find was mercury. Where does mercury come from? Fillings. I have no fillings. Never had a filling. So mama, yeah, so I hate to say this, you know, so, but I'm going to tell you guys as practitioners, mama can pass on her funk to you. So she passes good stuff like bugs, right, Shane? She passes her good bugs, but she can also pass chemicals and metals. And so unfortunately, mama has fillings, and mama was vaccinated, and I was vaccinated too, so I can't blame it all on mama, but I had metals from that. I also have to take responsibility for what I did to myself. So I consumed high amounts of a certain food substance. I don't even like to put it in the category of food because it's not a food. 
It's in sports drinks. Yeah. And this is super embarrassing. Are you guys ready for this? I went to the University of Florida on a sports medicine scholarship, and the University of Florida developed Gatorade, right? Some of you guys know that. And Gatorade in the beginning was a, it didn't have any flavor. Well, it had bad flavor, so they added sweeteners to it. So one of the sweeteners was high fructose corn syrup. Now they use nasty stuff like other artificial sweeteners, and then they use just plain sugar. And so in the manufacturing of high fructose corn syrup, you can get mercury. Okay? And where do you find high fructose corn syrup other than sports drinks? And all the foods I, I like to eat because I thought I could get away with it, right? So in sodas, in your mainstream Coca-Colas, your 7-Ups, your Pepsis, your root beers, your diet Mountain Dew, all that mess, or your regular Mountain Dew, excuse me, um, in cookies, candies, ice cream, I challenge you guys to go to the grocery store and find a pancake syrup without high, fr without high fructose corn syrup. Unless you live in like a cool place like in the Northeast that make like maple syrup. Okay, but if you go to your mainstream grocery store, every single pancake syrup has high fructose corn syrup. But the one that kills me the most is baby formula. So I have mamas come in, and um, what, what kills me is they're, they're trying to breastfeed, and then they go to the pediatrician, and the baby's spitting up. So the pediatrician says, oh, well, your baby has what? Reflux, and may have lactose intolerance, so you should change to formula. You know, crazy, right? Change the formula, and if you look at the formulas, I want to, like, I'm not a violent person. I did play contact sports, so there's a time and a place to have fun. But <laughs> I wanted to, like, take all the formulas and just, like, dump them all over the floor in the grocery store. I just wanted to, like, throw them all down. Um, a lot of the main ingredients, the first ingredient on a label tells you what? It has the most in it, right? Number one ingredient, high fructose corn syrup or corn sugar or corn. So what are the mamas feeding these babies? GMOs and corn, and what did I just teach you? Mercury. We have a huge problem, and everyone, the whole entire earth, needs you guys to help them. Okay? So long story short, I had high amounts of mercury. Um, using nutrition response testing, found the exact right supplements to get all that junk out of my system. The dizziness went away. The hair grew back in. Um, I didn't tell you I had irregular periods. They blame it on being an athlete. They're like, oh, you're a soccer player. You run, you know. It's normal for you to skip periods. That's not normal. My system wasn't working right. And um, some of you know my husband, Dr. Jason Dean. I was actually afraid when we first got married. He never said this, so don't think he's a jerk. But I thought he was going to divorce me because I thought I wasn't able to have kids. Right? Because some guys leave you if you can't have kids. And because I was so irregular, I'd have a period skip a month, have a period, skip three months, have a period, skip six months. I went to my OBGYN, and she's like, well, you know, everything looks good. Your blood values look good. This looks good. I know you're, you just have irregular periods. It's fine. Don't worry about it. And by the way, don't come back until you have a real problem. That was what she told me. So don't worry. I never went back. Ah, Yeah. So I'm happy to say with nutrition response testing and the help of systemic formulas, I have that beautiful baby that you guys see on the screen who's four now. Um, I'm very proud to say that I had her naturally at home. Yeah! Woohoo! I uh, used to think that people that went to the hospital and had epidurals and stuff like that were wimps. And I'm so sorry if you did it that way. I take it back because that was really hard. That was the hardest work of my life. Um, but the soccer player in me got a little too anxious and pushed a little too hard, and I had major ripping to the point where my midwife didn't want to tell me how much stitches I had. And so a couple days after she was born, um, I woke up and I felt really weird. I'm not talking about the stitches. That felt really not nice. You know those monkeys with, like, the red butts? That's what I felt like walking around in my adult diapers, right? That was super sexy. And, um, but I felt really sad. You know, I woke up and, and, and I thought that that cute little baby didn't love me. I thought that I was a bad mom. 
I thought like the world was ending and the sky was falling down, what would the medical profession diagnose me with? And, and what's the treatment for postpartum depression? Antidepressants. And if I was breastfeeding and I took antidepressants, who else would get the antidepressant? And what would happen to her health? Okay, so thank God for this work. Thank God for what we know, right? And so my husband did nutrition response testing on me, and just like I taught you, he found that that area where I ripped was an active scar. And I, did, I couldn't confront putting anything on it because it had stitches and it was swollen and it was yucky. So all I did was I took this laser and I lasered downstairs, right? And I went from the saddest mom on earth. It was like someone flipped a switch and I was me again. And I loved my baby and she loved me and I was okay and it was, it was amazing. And so I encourage you guys to not ignore scars and not ignore skin colonizer. The coolest part of the story is when, when Dr. Morris came up with skin colonizer, I was still having a problem with that scar. And what I mean by that is if I was on a long airplane trip or if I sat in a seminar for a long period of time or I sat in a car ride for a long period of time, that scar would reactivate. Okay? And by reactivate, I meant, oh, I'm out of time. Bye. End of story. <laughs> but by reactivate, I meant that I would get anxious or I would get depressed or I would just feel bad. And so I'd constantly have to be lasering that area. When he developed skin colonizer, I didn't even have to put skin colonizer down there. I did a couple times. But I could just put it on my hand. And because my skin's biome improved, that scar stopped getting activated. So I am super, super thankful to all of you all, all y'all, that's my Southern coming out, and Systemic Formulas, and Dr. Morris, and all the Systemic team. If you guys don't mind, give them a round of applause for the amazing work that they do. Because they're, they're the people behind the scenes answering the phones. I was joking with Shane that he's probably not sleeping, playing with the bugs all night, right? Playing with his second family. And... Um, their team makes an amazing, amazing products that help us with our own health and help us with our patients. So the, the future, I know Nicole loves quotes and I love quotes too, that a future depends on what we do in the present. So I encourage you all, whatever your next step is, whether it is seeing more people in your office, whether it's handling more mamas, whether it's if you guys were like me and you didn't want to have those difficult conversations, Whatever it is that takes you to the next level so you can continue to help people, please take it. Please do it. And I look forward to seeing all y'all back next year. Thank you.